everybody welcome back uh, to part nine of the Vulcan build this is the new tool uh, airfix kit uh, in the last episode I finished the painting did all the masking up and got the camouflage scheme on and you can see that after that I've gone in with a couple of coats of Tamiya's clear lacquer varnish uh, and that's gone on really nice and smooth I really like the lacquer paint for top coats so that's come out really nice and shiny it's ready for decals now and the decals that I'll be using are actually from an old sheet that I had in rather than buy a new set uh, and that's this one it's uh, an extra decal sheet for 617 squadron and it obviously has a Lancaster in it uh, a tornado there's a mosquito and I think a Mustang as well uh, but also uh, XL392, uh, a Vulcan from 617 Squadron. In the uh, two-tone camouflage scheme with light aircraft grey undersize. And that's how I finished this model. Now I did have to do a couple of modifications to the Airfix kit to represent XL392. Uh, at the time that I'm building this, which is probably the mid to late 70s, the bulges on the wing for the Skybolt missile attachments uh, were not present. I do have a photograph of the aeroplane from earlier on its in its career in the 70s where they, they are present, but uh, in the later time of its life uh, the bulges were removed, so I've taken those off. Uh, and the other thing that I hadn't realised was that uh, XL392 is a 201 series engine Vulcan and because of that I've removed the anti-icing scoops on the engine uh, bay doors on the underside they're molded into the airfix kit uh, both options in the airfix kit are 301 engine Vulcans uh, so they're correct for those versions but not for mine which is as I said a 201 series so I just had to sand those off cut them off sand them down and just touch in the light aircraft grey again to get a smooth underwing on the aeroplane. So it's just something to be careful of if you're doing uh, a different scheme to what's provided in the box, just make sure that uh, you've got the configuration of the aircraft for that particular airframe and for that period in time that you're building. So we'll get on with the decaling process now and I usually like to start with doing the main uh, decals. So I'll be fitting the round holes first, uh, all the tail decals, the fin flashes, uh, and then I'll apply the stencil data later on. So extra decals usually go on without any trouble. I hope this is the same case here. So we'll make a start. We'll get the fuselage roundels fitted. I'll use a little bit of uh, microset. I don't know whether it's going to need any sole. We'll see how it starts to uh, fit. So we'll get the decal in some water. I did leave that decal in the water for a bit too long. So if you look back at the last part where I did the camouflage scheme you'll see that I took a photocopy of this decal and cut it out and just positioned it so that I could do the camouflage scheme and get it in the right uh, position and that just makes sure that the camouflage scheme is correct in relation to the decals so I'll just let that settle down a little bit and a bit more set on top. Yeah, so that started to grip all right now. I will use a little bit of sol on this. So 
So you can see after the sole has been applied that the decal is starting to crinkle up which looks a bit alarming uh, but don't worry if you've uh, not tried this before it does come out alright in the end. So the microsol is softening the decal here and it should draw down into the panel line detail in the kit. The important thing once you've got sol on and it's in this sort of state is not to touch it because obviously it's extremely fragile and it'll just tear and break if you start messing about with it. So uh, it's important just to resist the temptation to fiddle around with that at this stage, let it dry and hopefully uh, it should pull down into the detail nicely. So I'm going to leave that for 15-20 minutes just to let the microsol work and then we'll see how we've done after that. Okay that's set up nicely now. The decal settled into the panel lines. So uh, just leave that to dry thoroughly. So uh, next I'll do the fin and we have the fin flash, the serial number and the squadron badge to go on here. And with a group of decals like this I like to do them all together just so that we know that they're all in the right place relative to each other. So uh, we'll have the flash the serial number and the 617 badge. So uh, because we've got three to put on all together we just need to work fairly fast with this. So we'll apply the serial number first. We've got plenty of microset on the job. Then the fin flash. And finally the 617 squadron badge. So again, I've got the port side as a reference so I've got those uh, balanced up just let it settle for a bit again just a bit of microset just to help the decal settle down into the panel lines. Again just uh, leave that alone for a while. Whilst I'm waiting for the fin to dry I'll put the forward roundel on. So again just making sure that they're equalised both sides. Okay, just let that settle for a while. Just go back and check the fin. Okay so that's all the main decals fitted. And I always do the main decals on an aircraft first because in the majority of cases the stencils go over the top of the main decals. So I always do them in that order. And they've gone on nicely. The 
Eccles have settled down into the panel lines there. And they're perfectly smooth uh, on the wing. So, so I'll apply a coat of gloss over all of these decals once I've done the stencils just to seal them in and then I can do the panel line washes over the gloss coat and then the final uh, top coat of matte varnish and I'll be using the uh, Tamiya lacquer varnishes again just for compatibility as well really because I don't want to be mixing different varnishes uh, it so it always runs the chance of uh, reacting on the finish. So I'll be using the Tamiya lacquer for both the covering gloss coat and the matte finish on the aeroplane. So uh, they've come out nicely. So I'll let that dry for a while and then we can come back and we'll start on the stencil work. So at this stage I'm just preparing the airfix undercarriage parts uh, and what I'm going to try and do is just stand the model on the undercarriage at this stage I won't glue them in but it's just something to prop the model up and I try and do it whilst I'm handling it a lot during deckling because it is possible when you're applying thin coats of paint to the model that it can rub through on the bench uh, as you're working with it and you're handling the model an awful lot during the deckling stage so it's very easy to damage the paintwork if you've got nothing to stand the model on and I like to give the undercarriage parts a good thorough clean up it's easy when you get to this stage to try and rush ahead a little bit and it's easy to skimp on preparation of the small parts and if that happens it just spoils the overall finished look of the model so I like to spend time prepping parts like this to be careful with those they're quite delicate those uh, arms that fit onto the bottom of the undercarriage the main gear anyway I'll sand those actually when they're on the model so I'll do the nose wheel leg first. So that link fits to the top and then the retraction strut attaches to that and further down the leg main gear legs come in two parts and this is going to need some clean up when I come to finish the undercarriage off I'll come back to these parts it's G32 in the airfix kit because they're going to need altering a little bit so we'll come back to those in a while because these parts are quite delicate I'll actually clean them up once I've glued them down because they'll just make them a bit more solid and just reduce the chance of breaking them. So this is one of the main gear legs assembled. So the first thing is to fit the locking brace up at the top and we're going to have to modify that soon but for the moment I'll just fit it into place as it is and then I didn't notice until just now but the lower end of the scissors has broken on mine so I'm just gonna have to be careful how I put that together I'll put the broken piece on first I don't quite know how I've done that but it should repair all right I 
and then we'll fit the forward part of the retraction gear in and link it to the link it to the undercarriage lock there at the top and also down at the bottom and then I can just join up the broken scissor link at the bottom there So, as I said, I've no idea how that's happened, but it's easily fixed. I think I must have just snapped it off when I was removing it from the sprue. But there we go, it's uh, no damage done, thank goodness. So just going back to the uh, lock here, you can see that Airfix give us this part with two braces in it and actually the lower one is a ground lock rather than an operating lock so this top one is the actual lock that was permanently on the undercarriage leg uh, the lower one is an additional lock which was fitted on the ground if the aircraft was going to spend a long time on the ground and that just added some uh, security to the undercarriage uh, whilst it was being serviced. And actually, these locks are fitted to most uh, modern display aircraft. So museum exhibits generally have these locks on. And that's just to take the strain off the undercarriage. And I think what's happened is that when Airfix um, have been designing the kit, They've gone obviously to a museum exhibit and they've recreated this ground lock, uh, which is this lower part. So I'm going to remove that for an operational aircraft. So it's just easily just cut off. Like that. And just tidy the stub up a little bit. So that's the undercarriage leg as it should be with the permanent locking me mechanism at the top there. So I'll return to these undercarriage uh, legs at a later stage in another video when we come to permanently paint them up. When we come to paint them up and fit them permanently to the model. But for the moment they're just to get it up on its legs. As I said just to prevent damage to the underside. So there we are, those are the so those are the gear legs. Uh, and we can use those now just to prop the model up, I hope. Okay, so now that the main decals have dried, these have been on for nearly two days now, I can go ahead and put the stencils over the top of them. Uh, so this one, for example, which is the uh, breaking point for the cockpit, the emergency braking point. Uh, this fits over, or at least the corner uh, of the decal does, it just fits over the uh, top of the roundel like that. So it's really important to have these fully dry because if we're gonna use any more decal solutions on this decal, it might start to lift uh, the base decal if it's not fully set. So I usually wait a couple of days. I've got other projects on as you know. Uh, so I generally alternate when I've got a, uh, a time like this where I need to leave something to set or to dry. Uh, it's handy to have another project uh, just to uh, go over to so you takes your mind off this you're not constantly uh, trying to get ahead of yourself. One thing that I have noticed about these cartograph decals in the Airfix kit is that they release extremely quickly from the backing paper. A couple of times I've left them uh, in for too long and they've come away from the backing sheet. They've been floating around in the water. And that's not a good thing because uh, it tends to reduce uh, the adhesion of the decal. So it's best to get them out as quick as
quickly as you can uh, and just leave them to soak long enough to actually release from the paper so that as you can see it's just overlying the base decal by a tiny little bit they actually settle down really well these cartograph decals but they are quite fragile I've just broken that one ever so slightly I've messed about with it a bit too long so I'll leave that alone for the time being the uh, next group of decals that I'm going to be fitting are the uh, emergency equipment decals or stencils and here I'm going to have to be doing a bit of mixing and matching because the decals that are provided in the airfix kit aren't right for my uh, particular version so the symbols for the emergency equipment the fire extinguisher and axe and so on are a bit different uh, the red on my version and Airfix provide them in yellow. So what I've done is I've actually butchered a Kits World uh, decal sheet up to get the right combination of uh, images that I need. Uh, so I'm just going to have to build this one up from the bits that I've got. So this is where uh, decent reference photographs are important. because the, uh, the aircraft did vary quite a bit uh, and particularly for the different periods when the camouflage scheme changed the stencil arrangements changed as well the colours and the positioning changed a little bit but uh, once I've got this image in position uh, I can fit the rest in relation to it so this is the important one to get in. I'm going to have to use a few of these Kits World stencils uh, for the late camouflage uh, scheme. But I won't be using anything else. I'll use the absolute minimum because they're not the best. Particularly on the stencils, they're uh, very thick. They're not as readable as the cartograph ones. Okay, so... Uh, with that first deckle in position that gives us the relationship of all the other ones so this is the uh, image that i'm using for xl392 so you can see it does have the red uh, emergency equipment stencil uh, and the arrangement of the rest of the stencils the rescue arrow and the uh, first aid uh, symbol is in a different position as well to the airfix kit so it's a matter of cutting the decals up and rearranging them and using the kits world decal for this arrangement here as well so a bit of a mix and match so just gradually rebuild the arrangement of the decals until we get the sort of configuration that we're after so just constantly uh, work back to the photograph and get these just as close as you can really it's not possible i don't think to get them exactly right but they're close enough like that i just need a white first aid decal so i'll just have a hunt round in the uh, decal spare box so we've got a rare old assortment of decals on there <clears throat> there's a mixture of the uh, original airfix decals which are the uh, written stencils here because they're much easier to read than the kits world ones the kits world uh, stencil decals are no good at all really uh, but i've used the rescue decal with the black outline from the kits world set it's a bit paler but i'm not too worried about that uh, i've used the kits world 
emergency equipment stencil and I've made up a first aid stencil from uh, some white background with uh, a red first aid cross from a Stuka kit believe it or not. So it just goes to show you never throw a set of decals away they'll always come in useful for something. Working on the underside now I don't think I'm going to end up fitting all these decals because some of the pale blue ones are so insignificant that it's just not possible to see them. They blend in with the light aircraft grey on the underside so uh, I'm not going to bother with them it's uh, not really that noticeable and I have to say I don't recall the stenciling on the underside being blue although I have checked with the fun decal uh, instructions that's a really good Vulcan sheet that's unfortunately out of production now but the instructions are online and it does confirm that light aircraft grey uh, stenciling was blue so maybe it's my memory that's gone what I do remember though is these stencils here which are next to the uh, entry hatch and it very helpfully says entrance um, I don't know whether people thought we were stupid but I always remember thinking that if you didn't know where the entrance was or on a Vulcan you shouldn't be working on it really and even worse you shouldn't be flying it so I just thought it was an odd thing to have but they were there so they're going on so I'll carry on and fit the rest of the underside decals it's not worth filming they're uh, very difficult to see so I'll get on with that and then we'll see what the whole thing looks like uh, when we finish that work okay so that's the airframe decals all fitted uh, one of the things I had to do here with the air brake no step uh, markings was again to use a combination of the airfix decals which are the yellow stripes uh, and the kits world uh, no step markings the ones provided in the airfix kit are letters whereas by the time uh, of the late 70s uh, the no steps were replaced with these uh, shoe silhouettes or boot silhouettes uh, with the red cross on them so again that's a combination of uh, two sets of decals I left all the decals to dry for about five or six hours just to make sure that they were completely set then I gave the whole model a wash with some detergent in water just to get rid of all the decal solutions I don't want any staining uh, under the top coats of varnish and the decal adhesive uh, will obviously be clear but when you put a cut top coat of uh, varnish over the top uh, it does show through so it's worth giving the model a wash at the, that stage uh, just to make sure that you get a nice clean finish on the top coats of varnish so uh, that's had two coats of the Tamiya uh, gloss lacquer and that sealed everything in uh, ready for the weathering process okay so uh, there she is all done in decals and sealed in nicely uh, all ready to start the weathering process on the model uh, but uh, I'll leave this for a few days now I've got some work to do on the Corvette this week uh, so I'll leave this to thoroughly dry for another few days so with the weathering uh, I won't be doing too much on it just a panel line wash probably uh, and a few uh, areas of streaks of grime and dirt here and there particularly on the underside uh, but I'm not going to overdo it on this I want a fairly clean looking model so there we are it's looking nice and that top coat's really uh, good at protecting the model at this stage so we don't get any more 
uh, scratches and marks on the model. One thing I didn't mention uh, in the earlier part of the video was that I had to uh, make some decals in the end. None of the sets that I had uh, had the gear door serials. You can just see them down in the corners there. Uh, and on this camouflage scheme, the aircraft serial number was always uh, painted or stenciled onto the undercarriage doors. So they are quite noticeable. It's worth uh, doing that. And if you've never printed your own decals before, uh, it's not too difficult as long as you can uh, use a word processor and get the text that you want. Uh, and then I just printed that straight out onto some decal sheet and varnished it in. I think when Airfix come to reissue uh, this kit in a different uh, colour scheme, I'm guessing that they probably will include uh, a light aircraft grey and two-tone camouflage option. I'd be surprised if they didn't, uh, because at that time the aeroplanes all carried, or most of them carried, the squadron badges on them, and it just adds a little bit more interest. So I think Airfix will do that in the next iteration of the model, uh, at which stage presumably they will include the uh, gear door serial numbers, but obviously I've had to make them. So there we are, that's all ready. We'll get the weathering done in the next part and hopefully uh, it won't be too long before we get this one finished. So thanks for joining me for this one, everybody. I hope to see you for the Corvette build next week, which will be on Friday as usual. And I'll get another Vulcan episode in just as soon as we're ready to do that weathering process. So until next time, look after yourselves, everybody. Stay safe and I'll see you in another few days. Bye for now.